so how about we go ahead and get started maybe so you know getting the census key you're, you're gonna have to get that so that should just take another um you know another minute um and again like i said the i, I the reason why i also kind of really want to get started is we are going to install a bunch more packages so um to kind of walk you through again this notebook um if you've opened up the notebook um, and we'll get into the R Studio, the the layout of R Studio, and all the functionality of R Studio a little bit more. But I kind of just want to take it um, take it with the notebook first and install some of the packages. And as things are installing, I'll go through um, some of the windows of R Studio. Um, but the notebook itself, it's interactive. Um, you can see there's a title. You can actually output these as HTML documents. You can output them as PDF documents. Um, so there's some nice functionality there, or you can just read them in um, like I'm doing, um, like we're all doing um, in, um, in our studio. Um, you can see here at the beginning, I've kind of just given a little bit of content about, um, you know, what we're, what we're, what I'm going to be really showing with this, uh, with this notebook um, is an introduction to some libraries that, um, that people have built. Um, and specifically, um, this tidy census package um, is, is sort of the highlight, um, but then there are other packages that are, um, that, that, you know, we're going to use together um, with, with tidy census to create maps. Um, I've also adapted um, another um, tutorial here from, um, from Duke University, from John Little's uh, Mapping with R um, site. And, and you can kind of go to both of those sites and a lot of the functions um, and, and, and the content in here um, is, um, can be found there. Um, and really the, the idea with this, um, with this notebook and just sort of what we're doing today is giving you a very gentle, I think, I hope introduction to R Studio, um, getting you to think about some of these libraries. And there's, there's, so many libraries out there that that kind of help you um, map um, and work with data and the ones that I've picked specifically are going to help you um, download some current census data um, help you get the census boundaries which is also really important um, be able to do some quick interactive maps um, and then we're also um, actually export um, some of our data as shape files which then you can pull into um, tableau into um, QGIS, into other software, into Cardo, um, you know, wherever. So, so there's a lot of functions and, and things that we're gonna be doing. Um, so here's my little preface, my little thing with the R notebook. Um, and this is the part where, um, you know, if you're in the notebook, this is, this is that code part that I was sort of mentioning. And so if you were in the Jupyter lab, there's a very similar sort of functionality where, um, you know, the, the grayed out areas have code um, here's just a very simple function in R. You can, you know, type in print um, uh, Mapathon's rock, and if you hit the run, you you print it out. You create that very simple, um, and so that's just sort of like that's the underlying, you know, um, kind of um, um, thing that's ha like the, what, what's happening here. Um, the the thing. So th this is where I'll kind of um, actually. Let's do let's let's install our packages and then I'll kind of talk about um, a little bit more about what's going on. So that was our first you know little command. We're going to download a whole bunch of packages. This hopefully doesn't take forever. Um, I've already downloaded this, so I'm not going to hit run here. But on this next line of like on the on this next line from like 29 to to 40, just hit run on that, and it's going to just kind of download each of those packages one by one. And this should take a minute if you if you haven't downloaded these. If you already have R Studio and you've downloaded some of these, um, you can either delete if you know that you have them, or if you download, um, there's just a way to kind of you know, or you, like it'll kind of overwrite. But go ahead and hit install. Um, one thing that you'll see is there'll probably be a lot of red text. Um, there'll be like maybe warnings. There'll maybe be different things, but. Um, unless there's some major, major issue, text is fine and it's just downloading. It's just sort of, you know, telling you that like, oh, I'm downloading from um, from this location and all the files are there and, you know, whatever, like if dependencies are necessary, things will kind of download. But try and hit run. Let's see, A, how long it'll take, because it might take a minute because it's a lot of packages. Um, and I know for like the tidyverse one um, and maybe ggplot, those are a little bit larger. So those might take a minute to um to download so go ahead and install packages um if anybody can comment and be like oh no or like oh, it's working that would be nice just to hear some comments um and see see how that package is um happening and 
this is where I'll, um, it's working. Good. Yes, yes, yay. Awesome, awesome. That's what I want to hear. Um, taking a long time, but working. Yes, good. Perfect. All right. So, um, so as you're doing that, you have, so this is where we can kind of start to branch out and look at our, um, our, our studio environment. Um, so you have your file over here. Um, we're going to get to this part here, this environment history connections um, in a little bit, but you know, there it is down here. Um, and then I have my console, my terminal and my jobs. The console, if, if you've kind of noticed, whatever you kind of play um, or run over here will, um, will happen over here. The console, um, for those of you who actually have some experience in R, this console is R. Like that's like if we hadn't installed our studio, we'd be basically working in here um, with none of the other, um, um, you know, our studio parts. And you'd just be typing things into here and running R that way. Um, so this is R and it's just here. And you can kind of, um, you know, when errors come up, it's kind of helpful to look at. Um, and this is also just sort of a running commentary of all the um, commands that we're doing. So this is there. And then finally, we also have this little area where files, which just has access to our desktop and our data, um, plots where um, visualizations will come up. And then once you do install packages, or if you're looking for packages, there's actually a whole um, section here where you can look package by package, um, or you can also see, you know, have my packages been installed. So um, there's also a help and a viewer window. So this is sort of another thing. I know a lot of people in using our studio will kind of, you know, you can kind of just move all of this over and just sort of have a bigger, um, you know, notebook and environment area if you want to. Um, and then, you know, if you need to kind of look, you can kind of do that. Some people customize this whole thing and just get rid of the windows and just have, you know, one or two. And you can do that as well. Um, I'm not going to kind of get into too much of this, but um, in the... Um, Think of the Windows um, tools somewhere in here. In the view section, you have all the panes. And so you can kind of actually like, you know, customize what you see here. So I'm not going to get into all that. Um, so packages are getting installed. Uh, wonderful. Once you install a package once, it's been installed. It's on your computer. Um, and then if you, um, if you want to, um, um, work with packages, you have to then run this library command. And library is actually the command in our studio that will activate um, these, um, these packages and, 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 um, and you know, activate all the functionality of them. So installing packages um, makes you know, the software sort of available. Running library will actually activate it. And you have to run the library command every time you open up our studio. So it doesn't remember um, that, you know, the, it, it knows that you have the packages, but it doesn't, you know, um, they're not running until you do the library. So once you've installed all the packages, um, and I'm going to do this, I'm going to hit run on library. And this is going to, um, to activate and have all these libraries working. Um, and it should just, you know, just quickly do it. And, um, and that's it. So, um, so, so far, so good. Um, this is very, um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping the silence isn't, um, you know, people, um, and if it does ask you to install some other things, feel free to do that. The R tools, that sounds good. I think that that's just sort of some of the, um, um, yeah, uh, that's fine. I, I, I was going to say, I don't know exactly. Um, there, there are just some dependencies that, that sometimes need to get installed, and for some reason, sometimes they do get installed, sometimes they don't. So. Okay, so um, one trick with working with R Studio for sure is setting a working directory. This is always really, really important. Um, so you've downloaded that Google um, folder. Um, I would just set that as your working directory. The reason why you wanna set a working directory is one, um, if you're working with any files or creating any files, um, it, you, R kind of needs to know where, where it, where it needs to create them, where it needs to look for a file, um, et cetera. So we're eventually going to create some files, but it's also just good practice to be like, all right, um, this is where my files are and, and this is where I'm working um, with them. So, um, so always kind of have your directory set. 
um, the easiest, easiest way to do it, I think, um, is by going to session. Um, and I'll do this a couple of times. You go to session and you set working directory and you choose your directory. And then you can choose whatever directory you want on your computer. And I'm gonna kind of give um, uh, a little bit more information. So here I'm on my desktop and I have um, this 2020 Mapathon R mapping folder. Um, I'm gonna open that up. And now I've set my working directory and you can again, see the console, um, you know, even though I didn't type that command in over here and I did it from the session, the console said like, that's where that happens. Um, it goes into the console and it sets my working directory. So this is how you're kind of seeing that interactivity, um, what, what you're kind of getting out of our studio. I didn't have to type in set WD desktop, et cetera. I could just go in into session um, and create that working directory, easy. Um, so the other thing about that working directory that I kind of want to, um, to highlight is that um, the directory, it's just the top level. So I'm gonna open up this folder and you can see here, I have some files in here. I only have access to these files. Now, say if I put in a new folder into here, and then I have some files in here that I wanted to work with in that untitled folder, I have to set my working directory to that folder. And any files in that folder, I can't pull them unless I you know, directly go to that file. So, um, so it's only for the files that are in the folder that you are, are in, if that makes sense. So if there's anything um, down deeper in the, in the folder structure, you don't have access to it. Um, so that's really important to consider, um, especially if you start working with um, you know, some spatial data like GIS files where there is a folder um, you know, that like for, for, um, for a shape file, um, you actually have to be in that folder. You have to have access to those files. So that's kind of the one caveat um, that, that kind of gets tricky because, you know, wait a second, I'm in the directory, but no, there's another folder and that's why you can't access that file and, it, and there's an error, um, for example. So, um, all right, I, again, I'm not seeing any, um, and there's another, um, yeah, right, right, I already saw that. I mean, I'm not seeing any other sort of issues. So I'm gonna kind of keep going. Um, so again, here in the R um, document um, notebook, I kind of have a little bit of information about tidy census, um, which is what we're gonna be using and kind of exploring first. Um, and tidy census is, um, is just an interface um, to, to get access to decennial and um, American Community Survey APIs from, um, from the census. Um, and so the, the thing that's really neat about it is that um, you're able to, to get both um, sort of the data and the shape files out of, um, out of tidy census. So that's, that's gonna be kind of um, one, of the, one of the cool things that we're gonna be able to do. Um, again, hopefully you have your census API key at this point. Um, and um, if you have your API key, the next command is just census API key. And you can see here, um, there's an empty, um, where the quotes are, there's nothing in here, right? So this is empty. Actually, I'll just type in empty. And this is where you are going to um, take your API key, which you should have hopefully by now, um, and hold on, um, should we put the two files downloaded in our working? Yeah, I was suggesting you should go ahead and do that because um, eventually if we kind of have time, we're gonna open up that CSV file. So, um, so set your working directory to that folder. Yes. Um, cool. And so I'm just gonna add my census API key here. Um, and for anybody who, um, who doesn't have their API key? I think I think you can just take mine. I don't think anybody's going to care. Um, so I'm dropping in my Census API key into the chat um, if you want to borrow it as you're creating yours or or whatnot. But you can get your Census API key, um, and then you can run this command um, when you're ready. Um, and when you run it. Um, this is where, you know, sometimes you get um, these little, you know, like a, like this looks bad because it's red, but this just all, all this means is you can install your API key for use in future sessions um, by running this function with install equals true. So if I add install equals true, it'll kind of remember um, and, and I can kind of, you know, you have, um, have the API key, um, but that's all. And so this is one of the things too, as you sometimes run commands, um, there'll be sort of responses here. Um, that you can kind of um, 
you know, that, that are just there. I'm just going to X out this response and I can clear it and now it's gone and that's it. So I should have my API key um, loaded and functioning um, as hopefully you should as well. Um, and so a little bit more about tidy census right now. So um, one of the big um, changes recently, mine says could not find function census API key. Um, did you run the library? And that if you didn't run, I did, yes. So if, it, so there are some easy functions when functions don't work 99% of the time, it's because you just didn't um, load in your library. And I forget to do it all the time when I, um, you know, open up a notebook and I kind of just, you know, skip over and it's like, ah, oh, forgot the library. So, um, Okay, so um, so a little bit more about tidy census, though, and one of the big big things um, just recently, um, the APIs. Some of the APIs have been suspended by the U.S. government. Um, these will hopefully come back. They're kind of retooling and refiguring this, so we don't have quite as much access. So the 1990 um, and 2000, um, and, and these are for SF1, SF3. Um, APIs have been suspended. And so this is, I think, for the decennial um, census partially. There's still a lot of data and you'll and we'll kind of see. So it doesn't don't don't worry. There's still a lot of access to to census data, um, but not quite not quite as much um, as there was before. Um, and um, one thing that's also kind of nice that tidy census has built in. So if you haven't worked with census data, there are literally thousands and thousands and thousands of variables. Um, and so one of the first things that we'll do um, in terms of commands, and actually, you know, um, on your own time after this workshop, I've, I've put in, you know, some links, um, you know, to tidy census. And so like, for example, if you go to this tidy census reference, um, you kind of get all the commands and you kind of get the functionality of, um, of what tidy census does. But again, this is sort of, you know, we're, we're kind of just doing flyby kind of introductory here. So let's just kind of um, go through this and then you can kind of go back and dive into this a little bit more afterwards. And, I, and that's the way I'm kind of hoping that, that you um, that you, you know, um, work with this um, with the with these materials as you get exposed to this, and then you kind of go back and dive in a bit deeper um, with the resources. So, but one of the first things and I really like this command. Um, what you can do is you can actually load a list of all the variables from the census. Um, and so this next command here at line 100, um, what, 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 I've, what, what I've set up here is a command to create a data frame. And this is where we're also gonna kind of slow things down just a little bit. We're creating our first data frame. We're using our first um, sort of function command. And then we're also inputting the information necessary um, to, to kind of run this whole thing. And so um, the command here is load variables. And this load variables is a function that's built into um, that library, the, the tidy census library. And so by putting in load variable, then you're kind of, um, you're, you're gonna be kind of stuck with putting in a year, putting in uh, American Community Survey, and then this cache true is just gonna be able to create something that we can pull up again. So, um, and then this part, ACS 2018, you can rename that to whatever you want it to be. That part doesn't matter. Load variables, it does matter. That has to be load variables. 2018 could be a different year, but, um, and then again, ACS5, that has to be ACS5. Um, so if you want to rename this to something more meaningful for yourself, you can type out American Community Survey 2018. You could do, um, one thing you can't do is you can't put the number first. It has to be letters first. So that's one thing to keep in mind, but just ACS 2018. And when I run this command, you can see a data frame is populated here. And I have 20, almost 27,000 objects of three variables of, and three variables, it's a, that's actually a little deceiving, but I have 27,000 objects um, down here. So one of the amazing things with our studio, and I think this is one of the things that, that I really love about it in terms of working um, just about with anybody is you, this, this our studio environment we create this data frame and we can actually now click on this data and a window pops up and we can see name, label, and concept. So this is our preview of um, American Community Survey 2018 variables. 
um, the name part is really important because that's what we're going to put in to download um, the data. The label part, that's just telling us um, what it is. And then there's concepts, um, like broader concepts, you know. So the first, what, almost the first, um, I'm just going to keep scrolling until something else comes up um, after sex. Here we go. So the first 330 variables um, are about, you know, some sort of variation of sex by something, by age, um, and then it has, you know, by race, by, um, by all these other different, um, you know, categories. Um, so this is all, you know, by, by ages um, broken down, um, you know, under five, five to nine, 10 to 14. So so much data in the American Community Survey. Um, and this is just sort of, you know, kind of, you know, giving you just a, just an entry into kind of seeing um, all of this. Um, and again, this is now just in a window. So I have my document here, and now I just opened up a window which where I can see the data. I can search here, car. Um, I think vacant, this was one that I like. So vacant, vacancy. Um, I can search for housing. You know, I can search for transportation, um, so on and so forth. So again, I'm really hoping that as we kind of um, create some things in here, you're gonna go back. Um, you're gonna maybe do this with American Community Survey or um, here's the command for the 2000 decennial census. So here I've named it DC 2000 load variables. 2000 SF1 is for the decennial census. And again, cache is true. And I run that chunk. And now I have, um, I have less because it's the, it's the decennial census. So you can see the difference too in the amount of data available variable wise. So decennial census still has a lot, but it does not have nearly you know, the 25,000. So here we kind of have the broader um, and you can see the H is, um, you know, as opposed to the B, B O. Um, so, any questions so far? Is this kind of does everybody have this so far? This is really cool, cool. Um, so, when you kind of go back um, after you know after we run through all of this, this is the part where you can go back, and this is the beautiful part about having this notebook. So now you see how to get the um, the 2018 ACS. Um, here you can do the 2000 decennial. So now if you wanted to, um, if you just click insert up here, there's insert C and it defaults, you know, the very first one is R. So if I click insert a new R chunk, now I have a little bit of R code in here. And now if I wanted to, I can do DC 2010. I can do my arrow, which is the naming sort of thing. If I type in load, um, variables. I can click load variables. I can do 2010. I can do that SF1 again. And I can do cache equals true. Hopefully I'm not forgetting which one of these is no longer available. But now if I do that, um, Hopefully I didn't, this is taking a little bit longer. I'm wondering if this is one that um, I'm putting in the wrong. Oh, it should be there. Well, for some reason, this is taking a little bit longer. No loop. Oh, here we go. If this doesn't go, I, I guess, I mean, the, the point is you can definitely go back and create your own um, here for some reason. Um, and this will happen sometimes. I don't know why this is kind of um, not looping through maybe, and there could just be a tiny little error somewhere that I'm not seeing, but I don't see one. All right, I'm gonna not bother with this. I'm gonna hit stop <laughs> um, and delete it. Um, but the point of the notebook, um, and this is why um, these notebooks are, are nice, is like at this point, if you wanted to, all right, so we have the 2018 and the 2000 decennial, maybe you want to create, um, you know, a, um, a data frame for one of the other ones. This is where you can kind of go back, um, look at the look at the command, 
um, figure out the year, figure out which census you want to load in um, and create a book and, and go ahead and do that. And you can just put, you know, leave yourself a note here um, that that's something you want to do. Um, so at this point, we've kind of, um, you know, we have these two um, sort of frames of reference. Um, now let's actually get some data. Um, and here um, with the lines, um, that, for me, it's 113. It should be around there for you too, um, getting data. And the commands for getting data um, for the decennial census, it's this get underscore decennial um, with parentheses. And then for the American Community Survey, it's get underscore ACS. So those are the two, the two commands that we're doing. And then basically um, very similar to what we did here with the, with the arrow, the command and the years, you're basically just structuring a, um, a line of code. Um, and this one's already there and you can kind of see how things are plugged in um, where here's the get decennial command. I have my little arrow um, and then the, the arrow is pointing to um, uh, the, the name of the variable, the, the data frame that you're creating. Um, so this is sort of the, the command. Um, and so I pulled up um, the vacant housing um, variable, this H005001. And I think if we go back here, if I do vacant um, housing, you can see H005001. So vacant housing units total. So this is the variable that we have for the year 2000. And I'm setting my geography um, for the state level. So we're, we're getting back decennial census um, for all the states um, for the year 2000 for that one variable. Um, and we're just calling it vacant housing. And so if you run that command, you can see it's getting data from the census um, and it's already gotten it. And now we have vacant housing down here as a data frame. And if you click on that, Again, you get your states, um, and then you have um, the District of Columbia as well as Puerto Rico. Um, so we have 52 um, rows, and we have the GOID, the name, the variable, and the value. So pretty simple. Um, and at this point, um, and again, this is sort of just exploring different things that, that you can do with this. Um, one of the things we've, we've installed ggplot. So one of the easy, super quick things that you can do is just plot this out. Um, so this next frame is doing a transformation um, of vacant housing using ggplot just to create a, um, a plot. And so if you run this chunk, and this, this part here with the, um, the percentage and the, um, uh, the caret there, it's just a transformation command. And then the ggplot you have the, um, this, this part here is just taking that data frame, the value, um, the name and the value um, and taking the data um, and creating um, a table. And so if you run that, um, what should happen hopefully is you just have um, a very simple, um, you know, all the states um, plotted out. Um, and then because this viewer is, um, is kind of small in here, one of the things that you can do um, is you have the X where you can just close it. Um, you can expand or collapse this, or you can actually pop the whole thing out, show in a new window. And if you show it in a whole new window, then you can kind of really, you know, open this up a little bit more and, um, and take a look. And this is just, a, you know, static, um, you know, plot. Pretty simple. Florida um, has the most vacant housing. Um, and we're here in California, we're top, um, we're at, you know, we're at number three. Um, and so this is kind of, you know, I don't know, very simple, but, but this is the kind of stuff like very quickly, um, if you get, you know, um, a table, you know, and of course you have to, you know, you're not going to want to plot, you know, all the census tracts um, from, from Los Angeles, because then that kind of gets a little um, ridiculous. But, you know, if you have data that kind of makes sense to plot out, um, you can do it and it's really quick. And, um, and then ggplot has, you know, we can, we're not doing a, you know, workshop on kind of like styling and, and getting all this to look really, really um, super, um, super nice, but you can really customize and you can really make things look a lot, lot nicer um, than just this black and white kind of um, visualization. So, um, but that's a really, you know, quick way of just kind of looking at that data. Um, now I just kind of want to walk you down of, you know, we downloaded everything at the, um, um, Okay, getting data from 2000, yep. 
And that should be right, right? Getting data from, yeah. Cool. Um, what I was gonna do the, at the next line, this 141 um, line um, is kind of walk you from the state. Now we're gonna do um, census track level. And one thing that we're doing too is um, we're adding something where um, here when we did this get decennial. So actually, let's let's run it. I just want to make sure get decennial. Yeah, because we're adding this um, geometry is true part. So we're, we'll take a look at the data and we're going to see how different this is. Oh, you can't run line 132. Okay, yeah, just you have to, yeah, definitely don't don't jump too far ahead. If for people who are jumping ahead, I know it's really, really easy to do that. Um, but some of the code is built on um, other code. So um, yeah. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, and run um, this next line. Well, maybe I'll take a yeah, actually, let's get through this part because we're almost done through this. And then at faceted mapping, we'll take a bit of a break and just make sure everybody um, is sort of caught up. So this is for um, for LA County. Um, we're doing the, the, the get decennial command again. We have state California, county Los Angeles, geography tracked. Um, we're picking that same variable and we added geometry equals true. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. Um, and again, hopefully it's getting all this. And in addition to the data part, where, which we could plot out, we're also getting now a shape file. Um, and so using the same thing in ggplot, um, I call this, this frame um, LA. And if I open up LA, one of the things that you're going to see here, along with our GeoID, our name, our variable, our value, we also have geometry, which means this can now be mapped. This is now spatial data officially more officially, I guess. Um, and so using ggplot, we're just going to use that transformation feature again in ggplot. Um, this is sort of the, the code for, um, for filling out and um, uh, picking the value, filling the colors with value. Um, the scale and the fill is this um, Veritas um, color um, uh, code. Um, CRS is the actual coordinate system. This is going to be kind of important. We're going to come back to that. Um, later as well. But if I run all of this and I did all this correctly, um, which I hope I did, um, this will take a second, but now we have um, a map. Um, and again, this is a standalone map. So I'm going to open this up um, and we can kind of make this a little bit larger. This isn't interactive yet. This is just, you know, just a nice, um, just a nice map. Um, and that's it. Um, again, this, the data here that we're looking at is, um, um, again, um, I think it's it's still housing, um, vacant housing in, in Los Angeles now by census track. So you can see that there's a lot of vacant, there's just a lot of vacant housing all across LA, but um, even from here, and I can't quite zoom in on this, so I apologize, but um, you can see even here, like there's a lot of vacant housing around that downtown area. Um, so there are some pockets of, of, um, of density in terms of vacant housing in LA as well. So anyway. So, so simple so far, um, ggplot is fun. Um, and so now we are going to take that same data frame and we're gonna use the map view library and we're gonna make that same map interactive in this next line of code. So we're not really doing anything. We're just running it through a different library now at this point. So map view is that library and we're just running LA We've already created that data frame um, and I'm just hitting run. And you just have this options um, to use the Tigris um, to kind of, um, and that's the geometry um, part. And so now we have that same map. I'm gonna pop this one out in, new, in a new window. Um, no longer static, um, now interactive. We're using Leaflet, OpenStreetMap, CardoDB. Um, we can zoom in. Maybe not the fastest, there's quite a bit of data in here, but I mean, this is just, it's probably as fast as your computer because this is just like loading using the RAM on your computer. The more RAM you have, um, the faster this is gonna load. Um, if I click on any one of these, um, I get the full information of the census track, the value, you know, all the information if, there, if there's more and that's it. So again, so here now, now I can start to see like, oh, wow, there's actually a ton of stuff out here around Venice. 
Um, there's a lot more downtown. And then everywhere else, it's just, there's just a lot of housing and it's just spread out. A lot of vacant housing everywhere in LA, basically, um, when you look at it by census track. So, um, so I'm just gonna close that out. Um, and, um, and let's pause here for a second. Um, how, did, how did that go for everybody? Hopefully, hopefully you kind of loaded in some maps. Hopefully that the interactive map viewer worked for you. Great, cool. And, and again, I'm throwing a lot at everybody here. And remember the whole point of this workshop is just kind of exposing you to some of these libraries. And I hope giving you enough of these commands that you can take them, these functions and adapt them um, and kind of, um, you know, um, pull, pull out some of your own um, um, variables if you want. Um, so um, I want to transition. This is, this is a really fun part, I think. Um, it's also a little bit limiting because we're not doing an interactive part for this, but because the data and because this is such a neat, I, I don't know, I, I think that this is actually really important um, to be able to do sort of um, faceted type of mapping. And basically what, what we mean by faceted mapping here is um, say if you have um, a specific variable and race is, the, is, is like sort of the quintessential example of this, and you want to look at the same area, um, but all the different um, um, variables. Um, and so with race, we have white, black, Asian, and Hispanic that we can pull out. We can actually pull out some more um, from the census, but we're, we're pulling out these four as our example. Um, and what you can do um, is construct um, a data frame where we'll be able to do a faceted map, four maps um, that show each of those um, um, data variables just side by side by side. Um, so it's kind of, you know, um, you're, you're able to sort of do comparison. Um, you can also do historical comparisons this way. You can do a lot of different um, variable, like uh, di different things um, with kind of building stuff out like this. Um, I think it's actually, I, I think the way that this is all set up though, it's sort of like one year, one variable. And I'm kind of giving you two examples. Um, so the first one is doing race. Um, and the way that we're kind of doing this is that, again, if we go back to um, the ACS um, part, and if we do um, race, um, and actually let me, let me make sure. Oh, and I think that this is, um, I think I did this for, no, it is. Um, so P O O. Maybe it's not here. Where are you? I think I'm just looking in the wrong. Here we go. I think I was just looking in the wrong. Yeah, this is decennial. Um, and so basically, um, we have P005003, 006, um, oh, and I screwed this up. Um, I think I was, um, so this is a good catch. So, um, so we can actually fix this. Um, if we go back to, um, to the decennial, um, you can see that um, white alone is 3003, um, black and African-American alone is 3004. So we have that. Um, are we, Four. I wonder if I just really screwed this up for, I might just, I, I think I'm actually looking at a different one. The point though, is that um, I think, I think what I've put in is actually correct. But the idea is that you have one um, larger category, right? So you have race, and then you have the variables underneath it. And so by building this, um, this race vars, um, and identifying white, black, Asian, Hispanic, um, you're able to um, to pull these variables um, from from that larger category and populate um, this one um, data frame with those categories. So the, the this particular 
um, thing right here is just is sort of um, generating a data frame that's kind of is going to be able to be used that way. So if you just run this um, this data frame, um, it it created this. So we created a value. And if you actually, and, and you can't really, you can't even open this up because it's just sort of empty. It has, you know, we're calling it race vars, um, and it has those um, those particular variables in there. And then we're going to feed in the data into that race vars. Um, and so the next part is actually going into the decennial um, uh, data and going to p zero zero one. Um, yeah, one zero. Yeah, so I think it's just in a different one. I, I think um, this might be 2010. I don't know why. I think some of the, the, the years might just be off. Um, but you're basically pulling in the decennial. We're pulling it in by track for for um, Los Angeles. Um, the variables are we're we're calling it from this race vars that we um, generated. Again, state Los Angeles County, um, and and again the summary like that top level variable. And so if we run this, then we basically should get a data frame, hopefully. Yeah, it was 2010 decennial census. That's why I'm I'm like, why, why is it not here in the 2000? It's because it's from the 2010 um, decennial census. So anyway, so, um, so now we have this um, LA um, race map. And if you click on LA race map, now we have, you know, all the census tracts, we have the variables, um, we have the geometry and all of that got loaded, you know, and we basically just use this to help us build that, if that makes sense. I hope that kind of, you know, makes sense. And I've done this twice. So we've done the race vares, and then I'm going to do, you have another example um, for housing. Um, if you do um, this head command, you can run that and it can just sort of give you, it gives you a preview, but it's the same idea of just clicking on um, um, on the table just to get a preview of it. Um, and now with this, again, this is sort of doing that mutation command um, with ggplot and, um, and all of this is sort of set. So you don't have to touch any of this, um, any of this stuff. Um, but if you run this command on LA race map, you will get um, a series of maps that will show each of those variables. Um, and where the population is. So again, this is um, um, this again is you know um, a really really cool thing. Um, I think I don't know. Um, and you can kind of do this for um, you know for any set of variables that are um, um, uh, you know a part of a category like that. So the the other example that I have is for housing. So housing variables, if you want to look at owner and renters in Los Angeles. Um, so same idea, I did, um, I'm calling this house vares, um, the owner and rent. So I looked up and I think this is the one um, where I might have done, um, well, I, did, I, I don't even want to look, but I think I might have done it from the 2000. But, um, but you can create this, you can run this. Um, it's created again, house of heirs. You can see it under values. Um, so I have the two. And then the next command is just pulling from the decennial, same idea, tracked variables, California, um, you know, same thing, run it. Um, it's the 2010 again. Um, and then again, same, same command, like all this stuff is the same. I just, all I changed was this house um, part. And we should have um, owner and rent. So, um, so again, if you kind of want to look at variables side by side um, like this, um, really, you know, um, really easy, um, fun way to kind of do this, I think, um, and very simple. So, um, so how about, um, again, like maybe this might be a good time if anybody sort of has a question. Um, and I see some chats, I think in the,
by clicking right No, they are written in Python. That's right. Yeah. So yeah, and I feel like you know, there's a lot of interdependencies and a lot of sort of um, um, you know packages that um, you know get created in in one language, but then can be applied into QGIS, ArcGIS, um, etc. So um, right, and it has a lot. Of, yes. Yeah, and and absolutely, and I kind of you know I think for this I I was tending to not show the analysis part that much, and I was like, I just want to kind of show more exploratory data um, with with some of these R um, packages um, and libraries. But that's the that's the other part I think with R that um, is also even harder. Um, you can't do as much in um, or maybe not as easily in QGIS or ArcGIS as some of the analysis part. Um, so the the next part, and I and I feel like this might be really nice because it kind of leads into QGIS um, a little bit, is that you can also use um, Arc uh, or Arc. <laughs> you can also use R to um, to actually create GIS data, and um, and then you know put it into QGIS. So so maybe um, you know after this, whatever you you know you create in here, you could actually um, put into um, um, into the QGIS workshop coming up. So again, um, this section creating um, shapefiles for QGIS. Um, and I think I have everything in here. I do. Okay, good. I was hoping. Um, so, um, and I think I kind of just, um, I might have done this twice. Um, I think you can actually just skip. I think I just forgot to delete creating shapefiles. Um, and you can just do, and you can just go ahead um, and do, and skip ahead to shape files and spatial objects. Um, so I think I'm just gonna um, delete all of this. Creating shape files for QGIS. I think I meant to delete that. I apologize. Um, and we're just gonna do shape files and spatial objects. Um, and so I was gonna kind of walk through um, just another example of getting some data from the census, um, doing transportation data. Um, and and in this set of examples. Um, we'll kind of do some of those interactive maps, and then when um, kind of exhausted that part, we'll um, we'll um, we'll actually create um, a um, a shape file out of this. So um, so this is transportation um, data. So we're just going to call it USA Transportation. This again is from the American Community Survey. So this is just like another example of downloading ACS data. You've got the get ACS command. Um, geography again is at county variables, geometry true. So I can go ahead and run that. Um, it's getting data specifically this time from 2014 through 2018, five year ACS. Um, we got it and um, we have our USA transportation. Um, and now we can do our map view, which I, um, I really love this map viewer. Um, this one will take just a second because it's a little bit bigger. Let's see. Um, and now this is actually opening up a whole window in my browser. Um, and so this is the United States. You can kind of zoom in. Um, and I kind of just like doing the transportation example because as you can see, the entire United States is purple, except for LA County for transportation. So like all the rumors that you've heard are true about LA and, um, and transportation and cars. Um, we really do have more cars. Um, and so this is, um, you know, our first take. Um, so I'm going to close that out. Um, now we can zoom into California. So let's go ahead and take a look at just at the state of California. And again, this is more just to kind of show you how you can drill down, go from, you know, state level to um, to or from like the the country level to state level, um, all the way down to to a county level. So. Um, so this next one, um, we're doing, you know, the same set, the same variable, but um, but we're kind of doing, um, um, we're doing all of this for um, for California now, um, and so you know, state, geography, county, um, we've got it, and now we can do that same map um, for just California. So again, obviously, um, uh, LA, but now you can kind of see also San Diego is up there as well. But, but we're, you know, we're definitely in the yellow. Um, so I will, um, I'll close this one out. 
And now the next one is like level, let's see for Los Angeles. Let's see actually LA County because um, this is sort of our, our data story now. Um, so I'm doing the same thing now. I've just renamed this to be LA Transportation um, just for LA County census tracts. And now we're just gonna do that same map for, um, for LA County census tracts. And so there it is. So this gets a little bit messier um, we're not messier, but um, but it, but a bit more interesting because now you can really see um, car density in um, in LA, um, LA County, and um, and it's always interesting this this area out here. Remember um, remember some of the earlier data we looked at. This is also where we have the most vacant housing in Los Angeles. So we have the most cars here and the most vacant housing basically in this. I mean I don't know if it's the same exact census tract now, but. But more or less in this um, Venice area, um, it's really fascinating. Um, but um, but there it is. Um, so um, we've kind of walked through from the country to the state of California um, now to our um, um, here um, to um, to LA County, and um, at this point. Um, we are now just going to do a really simple command where we're going to create this um, as a shapefile. And so remember, you have your, you've set your working directory. This is why we set our working directories. Um, and you're going to write that shapefile. And so this st underscore write is, um, is the command for writing a shapefile. Um, and we are going to, um, you know, if you've been kind of following along and you haven't renamed it, it we're just going to do it on this last one, LA Transportation. Um, and you just rename it latransportation.shp and you just run that um, and that's it. It's running it, it just ran it. It, it should be a very, very quick um, file. And, um, and now if we kind of um, go back, I'm gonna go to my um, folder um, and now you can see um, here is one, two, uh, I'm gonna kind of highlight these, um, you know, the DBF, the PRJ, um, SHX, SHP, uh, my shapefile. I might want to put that into a folder um, and, and kind of identify it because it, when it wrote it, it won't it won't write you a folder um, or anything like that. But it's just going to create all those files. Um, but this file now, um, for for everybody going into QGIS um, right after this, I can click on that LA transportation, um, and guess what? I should have QGIS. Um, hopefully, let's see. It might just be slow. It might be somewhere. I think I have too much stuff going on. Um, but it, it will open in QGIS. Um, so I'm going to close that for now. Um, so any any problems with that part? And we kind of got through that. Cool, I think. A little bit hard to, to gauge if everybody kind of walked through that. Um, so the the final part, a little bit of a bonus, um, and this is where you can um, um, open up um, that CSV file that I have in there. And um, I, I put in um, a pretty large, it's actually really large CSV file of 311 data from for Los Angeles City. Um, and it's specifically the 311 data about um, people who have called in about homeless encampments in LA. So it's a really interesting data set. It's one of the largest, um, you know, um, what people call and use 311 for ever since they installed 311. So it's kind of, um, you know, just a data set that I, I feel like um, people should be aware about and, and kind of look at. Um, and using all these libraries that we have, um, the read CSV is just a basic command. Um, and basically, um, as long as you have your working directory set to that folder where the CSV file is, you can do read CSV, you have your parentheses, you have the CSV file, um, we're going to name it, I'm going to name it um, homeless, um, and, um, and I'm going to run that. And then it's going to kind of give me this information parsed with, um, you know, it's kind of identifying the characters, the, the double and everything. So this all looks pretty good. One thing that um, you should be mindful, and this is um, especially important for the mapping part, um, with the mapping languages that um, um, that we've kind of, um, the packages we've set up, for doing this X and Y, the, the next step that we're about to do, um, to do the map view, 
um, there can't be any uh, missing data in your longitude and latitude. So I cleaned up the CSV file already to, to kind of ignore any, um, well, not ignore, I, I just took them out. I just deleted um, a, a couple of um, rows of data. Um, you can also try to ignore the data, but it's sometimes it's a little bit trickier to kind of get that right. Um, I find personally sometimes just to clean up your data as much as you can even before you put it into um, um, put it into some of the, you know, whether it's R or any other kind of software. I kind of like going that way a little bit more, um, unless it's something you have to do in R. Um, so anyway, um, I've read it in. Um, here it is. And you can see this is um, almost 40,000 rows of data. Um, and now I'm just going to do a quick map view um, and kind of hopefully not break my computer um, or slow this down too much. This, this should definitely take a second. Um, to run because there's so much and um, and I think it'll open up um, a new viewer. And I'm gonna quit some programs while I do this. Here we go. I took that definitely took a while. I was getting worried. It's happening. It's happening. <clears throat> there it is. It took a while, but this is also a lot of data. Um, so I'm going to open this up again into um, into a larger viewer. Um, this might take another minute to kind of repopulate. Did anybody else kind of, um, was anybody else, oh, there we go, able to, to get this one? Yeah, and this is definitely a little bit larger. I kind of should have maybe made this a little bit smaller, but I thought it would be kind of um, nice to look at. Um, and so part of this too is that this is one of those data sets where there are so many points, it's almost not helpful. So basically you, you essentially see an outline of LA City. Um, you have, you know, and, and you see all these calls. And if anything, I mean, this is just, um, you know, really um, kind of devastating to look at all these calls about homeless encampments um, in um, in Los Angeles. They're they're everywhere, basically. And you can see the entire city is, um, you know, you see the entire city outline, essentially, from these calls. Um, so one of the things to also kind of make better sense of this data, um, and there aren't a lot of ways of kind of sorting through this. I'm just going to close this out. And I'm going to also um, X out of this. So I've created that map view. One of the things that we can also do is we can create a spatial data frame. So right now, the map view is just pulling that longitude and latitude. And that's also part of the reason why it's a little bit slower. It's pulling that longitude and latitude, putting it into this map viewer, and letting us interact and look at it. One of the things that we can do with this ST um, underscore AS underscore SF um, command um, is create a, um, a spatial data frame, basically. Um, and so we're taking that data, the, the homeless um, uh, set um, data frame, and we're adding um, coordinate system um, to it. And we're um, pulling the data from the longitude and latitude columns um, and creating that. And so now we see, so the, the difference here essentially is this, this frame here has all of my information, right? And eventually, if you kind of look, you have um, latitude and longitude, but that's it, just latitude and longitude. This data frame, um, underscore SF, same data frame, but in addition to um, the latitude and longitude, we actually have a column here called geometry, which is spatial geometry that, that has been added. Um, and so now with this um, SF, this underscore SF, the very next thing we have to do is we actually have to add a coordinate system, a system to it. So we added the coordinates, but we still need to add a coordinate system. Um, so that part, um, well, one thing, first off, you can actually just sort of see, like if you run that next command, um, you can see there's no, there's no um, coordinate system, NA. So then um, by just doing, um, the, you know, 4326 is the number, of the coordinate system, we're, you, we're doing our arrow command, and we're just adding that coordinate system to, um, to that data frame. 
and now it's been added. Um, and so now if we click on this data frame, you can see coordinate ref reference system. It's this EPSG, very standard reference system. Um, and, and all that information has been now encoded into that. And now if we do that same map view, um, I'm also adding um, a way to kind of filter through that data by, um, by doing this Z collection equals C. So the C part is pulling out a variable um, from, from this, um, from this data set. So we could do it on any one of these. We could do it by action taken. We can do it by request type, status, um, request source, um, anonymous. So that's what I'm doing. So a lot of these calls are anonymous. Um, it, it, it's either anonymous or it's not anonymous. So I thought that, was, that, that would be just an interesting one. It's still kind of very, very messy. Um, but this is just sort of a different, you know, um, um, something that you can do once you create it as a spatial frame, you can kind of um, be able to sort and, and kind of visualize this way on a column of data. And again, this is going to take a minute um, to kind of work. Um, And there it is. So now, um, same map, but you can see up here, um, these are, um, you know, whether the calls were anonymous or whether they weren't. And if we start to zoom in, this is where, again, you kind of start to be able to explore this a little bit and you start to, you know, there, it, it's a little bit harder, but if you know some of the neighborhoods, if you know some of the places, you can start to see like, oh, wow, there's a lot of pockets of anonymous calls here or there. Um, and so if you're kind of trying to understand some of the things happening on the ground, especially in Los Angeles and understanding the unhoused um, homeless situation here, um, you know, this data set is actually really rich and just, again, so large, um, so much interesting um, information here. Um, so, um, oh, and, and of course, if you click on any one of these features, you get all of the, um, you know, all that information that's in there. So um, some of the other interesting, um, you can, we could map this by police precinct. Um, and one of the interesting ones, actually, maybe I, maybe I can kind of show that. Um, I noticed that um, they also have um, the CD member, so the community district member. So if we go back here, instead of anonymous, what if we did CD? Um, and you have to just get this exactly right. So hold on, um, CD member. So let me run the same thing with CD member. And for those of you who do want to jump ahead, the final, final command is just to run that and create a shapefile of that data. Um, again, pretty simple, but, um, but for those of you kind of going into the QGIS workshop, you can kind of come in with some data if you, um, um, if you wanted to, to explore some of this. So now we have um, color coded. So we have all of our um, council members. Um, and we can kind of see the map that way. And so here you can start to see some boundaries again. Um, which is kind of interesting. And then um, for some areas, you can kind of start to see the blurring of um, the community district members. Um, so this is, this is a, I, I really, I also kind of like this one um, where you can kind of see these um, district members. So um, again, we have actually plenty, plenty of time right now. So again, the, the very last code um, was just to um, use that, the, the right feature again. So um, you know, whatever, um, uh, you know, if you wanted to, to kind of take that, um, that spatial file, um, you can write that as a, as a, as a shape file um, and create that. So that's my la the last command um, that I was going to show. But what I was hoping for now, um, we have, you know, one, we can kind of, you know, just generally talk about our other packages, other, you um, you know, R and whatever. We can talk about whatever GIS kind of related stuff, but I also really would love to, to see um, some of the census um, data that you might be interested in, or um, if there's a CSV file with latitude and longitude, as long as, um, you know, there's no uh, missing data, 
if you find um, maybe an interesting CSV, or if you have one, you know, just you know, running it in and reading it and and creating some maps. Um, and again, you know, from from this morning, I'm not sure if um, if there were some maps created, but it would be um, it would really be fantastic if um, if people are creating maps um, with their own um, census data. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, create a. Um, um, and actually, maybe I'll just create a Google slide deck in here um, for examples. And if you just want to, um, um, I'll share this in here. Um, I'm going to share this with everybody. So I'm going to give that slide deck um, link to everybody, and if there's a map that you can, you know, cut and paste and um, and put in here with just a little bit of a description, just you know, create a slide. Um, I'm actually going to. I, I really, um, I really, really like. I, I've been working with this 311 data for a little bit, and um, and there's some interesting. The the other interesting bit from it is. Um, there's also whether your phone is an Android, um, whether it's an app, an iPhone, or if it's other. Um, that's another interesting sort of um, little, um, you know, just I don't know, tech tech information that's sort of built into this. Um, but I also really, really like um, um, this map of the the community districts and who's represented and who has um, who has these calls. So I'm going to kind of take a picture of this. Um, and, and yeah, let's open it up for a conversation. Um, let's maybe make some maps um, while we're um, while we're waiting for the next workshop. Um, and I, again, I really would love to hear, you know, um, what census data people are using or what um, what city um, data sets. The three one one data set is just one that I um, you know have been working um, and found from um, from LA Open City um, data. And I guess the the real big question is how many people got through? Um, as I know, I feel like everybody kind of got through um, everything, but I hope I hope that notebook worked for everybody. It's a little obviously a little hard to tell when you're um, when I'm over here in an office. And I'm going to go ahead and um, I think stop sharing uh, my screen for now, so we can kind of get people back. I might stop recording there.